So here we go with a quick guide to ultras. Um, now for the purposes of this guide, I'm gonna make a couple assumptions. So one, you've already gotten a normal ending. Um, I would highly recommend you try that, successfully get that before you go for an ultra. Um, just, it's a bit simpler. It's not necessarily too much easier, but that's going to provide like a good base amount of playing skill if you can manage an, an ending. And two, um, I'm not going to explain absolutely everything that I am talking about. So if you hear some area, some item, some location you don't know about, I would recommend you look that up in the wiki. Now we're not going to get into anything you know too, too crazy here. So first off, what is an ultra ending? So an ultra is where you reach D50, which is the final level of the game. And then instead of closing the chaos gate, you uh, enter it. And there are a few requirements uh, that you need to satisfy to do this without dying. So first off, you need to be crowned. Uh, so that's something that you probably did anyway on your normal ending. Uh, there are three different alignments. Um, so you can be neutral, lawful, or chaotic. All of these have, um, have a particular ending. You can go ultimate chaos god, ultra neutral ending, ultra lawful ending. Um, so whichever you choose, you are going to need to be at an extreme alignment. So for L, that's going to be L plus. For C, that's going to be C minus. And for n, that's just going to be n equals. And now I would highly recommend that you get this alignment before you're actually on d50. Uh, there are some tricks you can do to change alignment on d50, but obviously that's just not something we want to get into on d50. So just have this alignment before you enter that. OK, next requirement. So if you are n, oops, if you're n or c, you need to be extremely corrupted. Um, so that means up to corruption Q. Um, the game also gives you a message when you reach this corruption level, but it's easy to miss. So you could just check your corruption list. If it goes up to Q, you're good. If not, you have to um, get more corruption. Uh, now for lawful ultras, this is not a requirement. You can go in with zero corruptions if uh, you want. In fact, you probably should want that. That would be the ideal. <laughs> Ideal way to start out uh, the final fight. And then, besides these things, you're also going to need three items. So you're going to need the Crown of Chaos, you're going to need the Medal of Chaos, and you're going to need the Trident of the Red Rooster. So let's start out with the Crown of Chaos. So what do you need to uh, get this bad boy? Um, so the Crown of Chaos, the first step is you're going to need to feed the Demented Rattling and Dwarf Town six artifacts while you're chaotic. Um, and now this is a very important part, obviously. It's one of the uh, items that's required for the Ultra. So I would highly recommend you don't get into any sort of combat in Dwarf Town. No, nothing weird there. If you do want to do the Greater Demon quest, summon a Greater Demon in Dwarf Town, uh, it's best to get Rattling off of the level before you do that. So anyway, you need to uh, give him six artifacts. Um, you actually don't need to talk to him after that, but he'll tell you some, some information after you talk to him after giving six artifacts. And what that does is that opens up the st Ancient Stone Circle location where you can go and fight uh, a boss to get Crown of Chaos. Uh, now entering Stone Circle... You need to go in at a very particular time. Um, normally, it's just a wilderness location that you can't do anything with. Uh, but you need to go and visit it at 23 hours on Dark Knight. Uh, now, Dark Knight is, um, I think, basically the first day of every month. And it happens every 30 days. Um, so there are a couple of different ways you can uh, check time. They're a little bit different. But basically what you should do is check the time with whatever method you prefer. I like just pressing at and going to the character info screen. 
um, and see what it is. So you start the game on Dark Knight, and then every 30 days after that is another Dark Knight. Uh, and now there is a little bit of a trick with regards to entering Stone Circle. So I said uh, you need to go in there at 23 hours. Now the issue is when you are waiting in the wilderness, that action takes, if time passes, that action takes one hour plus zero to 10 minutes. So what can happen is, let's say you're at 22 hours and uh, 53 minutes. That's a bad five. Uh, 53 minutes, it could advance you know, an hour and 10 minutes, and then you miss Dark Knight entirely. Uh, but I do have a fancy, I think never before documented trick to get around this. So what we're going to do is instead of the normal thing, which is to wait on the stone circle itself, we're going to be waiting on a square next to the stone circle. And then we uh, are going to be waiting until we get to 21 hours. So now there are three possible scenarios here. So the first one would be that uh, it goes straight from 20 hours to 22 hours. So this is basically the sort of nightmare scenario we would have if we were um, standing on the stone circle or analogous to it. So if we were at 22 hours and it went ahead two hours, we missed Dark Knight. But in this case, if it went straight from 20 to 22, we never got to 21, that means it just rolled over. So we've got no worries. Um, it's going to be completely straightforward to get to Dark Knight. So you just have to walk over to Stone Circle and enter it. Then the second scenario would be that it gets to 21 hours and 39 minutes or less. Uh, in this case, it's not possible that it's going to roll over because if we wait another two times or move on to the stone circle and wait, um, it's not possible that we're going to roll over this because at most 20 minutes can be added and we're only at 39. So that's straightforward as well. Uh, so if it gets to 21, 39, you can just walk over to the stone circle and then wait or reverse those, wait, and then walk over to the stone circle. The final scenario, though, and this is the tricky one, is when we get to 21 hours and 40 plus minutes. So here we're in danger of um, the time rolling over two hours in an inopportune time. So what we're, we're going to do is instead of waiting on the overworld map, we're going to enter the uh, whatever wilderness square we're standing on. And we're just going to wait until it's um, 22 hours flat. Uh, and we can do this because time passes at the normal speed in, uh, inside of Wilderness Encounter. It's not accelerated like it is when you're on the overworld map proper. So that's a bit of a trick to get into Stone Circle every time. Um, of course, you can not worry with this fancy stuff and just wait on Stone Circle. Most of the time it'll work, but sometimes you're going to have to waste another month waiting, which always uh, feels kind of bad. Uh, then I'm just going to touch on one other thing with the Stone Circle. So the boss is Karyax, the multi-headed Chaos Dragon. And uh, one thing I should stress is that you do not have to rush this. Um, you know, there, there's no requirement. Once you talk to the Ratling, you're always going to have access to Stone Circle at the appropriate time. So, um, yeah, you, you can just delay this till you're right about ready to uh, go win the game. The other thing is that uh, when fighting Karyax, uh, standard stuff like Cursed Invis works, but he also has a poison melee, so potions of cure poison are going to be very effective against him. Okay, next up, that's enough about the Crown of Chaos. Next is the uh, Medal of Chaos. Uh, well, that's not a very good medal, but all right, you get the point. This one we get from Gabve in the High Mountain Village. And now she's got a series of fetch quests that is um, started off by uh, talking to her after satisfying the Demented Rattling. And this is another thing where you need to be chaotic for a little bit. So you need to be uh, chaotic until you get the um, giant boar skull quest. So once you've got the skull quest, uh, Gabbe no longer cares about your alignment. You can do whatever. 
Um, now, uh, something on her fetch quests. So probably the most annoying item that you need to get is Scroll of Danger, um, just because it's uh, pretty rare. One thing, if you don't find it naturally, that I would recommend is going to the Antediluvian Dungeon and, you know, the um, scroll shop that has the uh, one of the Dwarven map fragments. Just go there and get a bunch of restocks. That would be one way to sort of force a Scroll of Danger to spawn. Uh, other thing is, for the skull, um, well, I, this isn't like a boar skull at all, so I'm not sure why I'm drawing it. But uh, anyway, for the skull, it is useful to be doomed in the when you're traveling the wilderness to get this. So one way would be, say, Crown of Science from uh, Dark Forge, where that to be doomed. Other thing would be you could maybe eat Oracle in HMV to be doomed. Uh, the boar is um, only found in forest wilderness encounters, so um, it's good to increase the frequency of that. Um, then, okay, there are actually some more notes. So... The Farmer Corpse. So there are some ways to avoid the alignment drop. Easiest is just to get a companion to kill the farmer for you. Um, I would highly recommend you go to the Borderland Settlement for this uh, instead of Terranio, because obviously lots of worse stuff can happen if you mess up in Terranio. Um, and then finally, the final item she needs is a Wand of uh, Monster Creation. And now for this, it's, it's a pretty common item, but it is the last item. And you want to make sure you don't have mana battery. Um, because she requires a wand that has um, one or more charges. So I guess you normally wouldn't be keeping mana battery anyway, because it's, it's a terrible corruption. But it is absolutely required that you remove it. Um, at some point for the Ultra, if you haven't uh, handed in the Wand of Monster Creation to God Bay yet. Uh, so that is the uh, Medal of Chaos, and now we get to the star of the show, what makes the Ultra the Ultra, the Trident of the Red Rooster. So there's a very long and convoluted uh, quest line to get here, and it actually starts out uh, in some ways at the very start of the game. So one of the quests, it's going to be extremely annoying if um, you don't have a very rare monster as your first kill. Um, more on that later. A lot of people recommend Outlaw for the first kill. My preference is actually to get a good wife or a child from Terranio. Uh, there's a bit of a trick to this. Um, so normally these guys won't move next to the edge of the map. But you can swap them there, then move to the edge, and then move out, and they will follow you to the wilderness, and you can get them out of Terranio that way. So that would be my recommendation for the first kill, um, because these guys, there's never any reason... Well, okay, I shouldn't say that, but there's rarely going to be a reason you want to kill more of them, and they never, ever show up in uh, dungeons. If you want to be a bit fancy, or, well, a bit less fancy, then you can go for a, a beggar first kill and hole in the wall, but... There's additional risk to that, so I prefer the uh, heinous murder approach. <laughs> okay, so next element that we need for the trident um, is Amulet of Life Saving. So this is probably the most, imp most annoying part of an ultra, because these items are super rare. So we need an Amulet of Life Saving because we're going to give it to uh, Kelavaster. He's the dude who shows up on the uh, stairs on D16. Um, and generally, we're going to be getting Amulet of Life Saving by wishing for it. Um, so we'll more on this later. Uh, another alternative to Amulet of Life Saving, by the way, is if you start the game on a particular day, Resurrection Day, as you can look up on the wiki, uh, then there'll be an artifact amulet of life saving generated in Hole in the Wall. If you generate Hole in the Wall or uh, La Wenialithol, if uh, Bandit Village, let's say, it'll be generated in the Black Market Shop there. If you visit and generate there, generate the shop on that particular day. More on that later. So we're gonna need Kelly later, and then the next step in the process is uh, in Unreal Dungeon or Unreal Levels. So there's that branch. Uh, and where you get to Mana Temple, there's also another staircase on level 4. 
guarded by Sharad Wador, the ancient karmic Wyrm, and he uh, needs you to kill his rival, the ancient blue Wyrm, down below. Um, and he's gonna, for this, he's gonna award you with a big pile of items, including an artifact dagger that we're gonna need to prove that we mean business to the assassin prince. So, some advice here. Um, Sherrod will get really annoyed with you if you take his quest and then move away from the stairs. So then that, yeah, that's really, really bad. You don't want to do that. Um, but keep in mind, you don't actually have to take his quest before descending. So you can do something like clear out all the levels, find your way down, and then take the quest and postpone it. But what you also really don't want to do is um, not take the quest and then kill the uh, ancient blue worm, because then you are well and truly doomed. Uh, you'll, it's going to be impossible to get an ultra. So don't need to rush taking the quest, but make sure you take it before you're fighting uh, the... Actually, he's a purple W in ASCII, but before you're fighting this bad boy. Okay, so next step. So I mentioned Assassin Prince, so that's why we needed the dagger... And Assassin Prince is also going to have a level requirement, so you need to be level 45 plus, or if you're an assassin yourself, you only need to be level 30 plus. And uh, here's also where the first kill, that good wife kill or other, comes into play. Once you talk to him, he's going to uh, give you the quest to kill Filk. And this guy is hanging out on uh, a level of the infinite dungeon corresponding to how many times you've killed your first kill, so ideally that's just going to be one time, because we killed that one good wife and there was never any reason to kill more of them. Uh, so next up, you can go down to whatever ID level that is. Um, generally, just Wanda Fireballs will deal with Filk all right. Um, keep in mind, you don't necessarily need to find him on the ID level. You can just leave and then encounter him in the wilderness. Um, since he's a peaceful monster, and when you, when you leave a peaceful monster behind an ID, they will uh, find you in the wilderness. Um, so if you want to be fancy, you can leave the ID level once you've generated it and find him in the wilderness. I uh, kind of prefer fighting him on the ID level, because I don't always trust this trick to work, but it does, it does, I assure you. I'm not leading you astray here. Okay, then, after that, we're going to go and talk to the Mad Minstrel. And finally, we get to the location of the Scintillating Cave. Scintillating Cave is um, a bunch of cavernous levels, and then finally at the bottom we have a special super corrupting level which features the Emperor Moloch. Um, and now there are a number of ways you can approach this fight, but the one I'm going to recommend is uh, just use Potions of Rock Chaos. So if you can get six uh, cursed potions of rock chaos and just throw them at him that's going to transform him into either a chaos mutant or a writhing mass of primal chaos and that's a lot easier to deal with than an emperor moloch and in fact you don't even need to deal with him because he's going to drop the item that we're interested uh, once uh, he transforms and that would be the crumpled scroll uh, now a little trick with the crumpled scroll it's not used up when you read it um, so as soon as you pick this up, you should read it, um, just in case it gets destroyed on the way out. If you've read it once, you'll be able to create another one with a magical writing set. I mean, again, that's not an ideal situation, because magical writing set is pretty rare, but if it gets destroyed and you haven't read it or you haven't identified it otherwise, then you are out of luck for your ultra. Okay, and then the final step, <laughs> finally... This is why we saved Kelly. He's going to be hanging out in Terranio. You give him the scroll, and he will finally... Assuming you are not a fallen champion or chaotic, he will give you the trident of the red rooster. Okay, so that wraps up what we need on D50. Now we're going to get a bit more into general strategy. So first up, character creation. What sort of character should you go for for an ultra? Well, my recommendation would actually be just play whatever you did for your um, your gate closer because um, ultras aren't necessarily more difficult than gate closers. They're just longer. So if 
you've got something you're comfortable with, you can just go for it again, it'll be fine. The one caveat I would have is for trolls and orcs, they've got some special considerations. So the issue with troll is if you remember we needed level 30 or level 45, uh, mostly level 45 unless you're assassin, and that's going to be very difficult to get on troll. So I would recommend either you play a troll assassin or you play a troll caster. And then the trick with the troll caster is that you can do some disgusting stuff with the uh, fungal caves pool. Just surround that with doors, wait for stuff to spawn, and then kill everything inside with high radius fireball spells. And that will get you to level 50 even on troll. Um, but yeah, okay, you are complicating matters, of course, by picking troll. So maybe better to avoid that. And then the other thing would be with orcs. Um, they've got about the lifespan of a mayfly. So that is an issue because one of the main recommendations I am going to have for getting the wish is drinking from pools. Um, and uh, yeah, artificial aging is one of the possible effects from pools. So yeah, you are with orc, you are either going to be kind of gambling with uh, getting screwed by aging, or you're going to have to use a different method to get the wish. Uh, but other than that, um, if you can handle it for a gate closer, it should be fine for an ultra. Uh, now we're going to talk about overall alignment strategy. So there are, of course, three different flavors of ultra depending on your alignment. There's lawful, there's neutral, and there's chaotic, and there's a different alignment strategy for each one. Well, rather, there's a different alignment strategy for chaotic versus lawful or neutral. So you remember, to get Trident of the Red Rooster, we need to not be chaotic, and to enter the gate, uh, we need to be crowned. So this is obviously a problem with chaotic, because uh, you need to postpone crowning for a really long time uh, to get uh, Trident first. So the strategy with Chaotic is you're basically just going to play the whole game as L, and then only at the very end, after you've gotten Trident, do you get the Crown and Medal of Chaos. And then after that you can crown. Uh, but for L and N, it's a little bit easier because you can crown sooner. So for L and N, what you want is to just switch alignment for getting the uh, Medal of Chaos. Or not for getting the Medal of Chaos, but for starting that quest. So the only, the last thing you need to be chaotic for is getting the Boar Skull quest. So once you've got the quest for the Skull, you're all good. You can switch alignment um, and get crowned. Um, so yeah, just just do that, crown after you've got the Boar Skull quest. It'll be all good with alignment. That's much simpler. Um, and now we're going to move up to the Amulet of Life Saving. Look at how to get this in a bit more detail. So I'd say the probably the simplest way to get this is from pool sipping. So one place where you can get a bunch of pools is Dark Forge. That would be the main location. Another thing that people overlook, I think, a lot is that Rolf Quest uh, has, Rolf Fortress has a bunch of extra pools, so, and some of them you can even access after killing dwarves. <laughs> so there are five above Rolf, and then his level, I believe, has another six. So that's another place to get more pools. Uh, now, strategies for drinking from pools. Uh, I guess there's not that much, but just whenever you get doomed, you have to remove doomed um, because you can't get the uh, wish from pools while you're doomed. Uh, now, let's say you don't want to mess up all your intrinsics with uh, pool sipping or you're playing orc uh, and don't want to get aged to death. Now, the other way that I think is fairly reasonable is ring dipping. So what you want to do is get a, a big stack of uh, duplicate rings. You can dip up to 19 at once. This is going to be a lot easier if you've got a um, ring shop. Uh, but what you're going to do is dip however many you can into a uh, blessed potion of exchange. It is important that it is blessed. And you're going to do this on a DL8 level, such as, uh, say, D8. 
Uh, VDDL is also another convenient DL8 level if you want to go there instead. And then hope to get Ring of Genie Summonings for your wish. Uh, and then I, I guess I will propose a final, much less practical way if you really hate RNG. Uh, and then you can play a wizard or necromancer, and you're going to find a spellbook of wish in library. Um, now, casting wish is pretty difficult. Uh, it's not going to be like archmage levels of difficult, because you only need to cast it once, and you can cast it on Silver Knight as a lawful character, so it only cost it only cost 1,500 power points. So maybe you could get to like level 30 or level 40, drink a bunch of boost mana and boost willpower potions, and then cast Wish from memory. Um, I wouldn't really recommend this, but okay, if you absolutely want to Wish with no RNG involved or very little RNG involved, then uh, that would be the way to go. And finally... Uh, we're going to deal with the uh, the main event, actually fighting Andor. So, you've uh, got all the requirements for the Ultra, you're about to enter the gate. What should we be doing to prepare for this fight? So first off, if you've got boost potions, drink them. Drink them all. Uh, bless boost speed, definitely. Um, if you've got Mushroom of Ecstasy... Eat that too beforehand. Bless and eat that. Um, I'll boost attribute potions, of course. So that's what you do before entering the Chaos Gate. Then as soon as you enter, you're going to want to... Well, assuming you're not lawful. If you're lawful, you can just uh, start fighting. If you're neutral or chaotic, then you're going to need to use your Corruption Removal because you started out extremely corrupted. So your Scrolls of Corruption Removal, your Potions of Cure Corruption... Um, at least a few of those. And now let's get to how we're going to kill Andor. I'm going to recommend the uh, best approach. Uh, not the most glorious, but what I consider to be the best. So, essentially, we want a setup like this. We're standing close to Andor. We've got walls on either side. And he's not standing in a wall. And then we're going to use Wand of Lightning uh, or Lightning Bolt Spell. And we're going to do this. And he's going to take a lot of damage. And you need to do this like 20 times, and he's dead. Uh, obviously, we have uh, Shock Immunity from Trident of the Red Rooster, so that's not an issue. Uh, you may want to drop your Corruption Removal stuff first uh, just to keep it... Um, Keep it not destroyed by lightning. <laughs> and uh, there are two corruptions that can concern us with this strategy. So one is mana battery. Again, this is an issue. So you, this is actually guaranteed to be in your corruption set. So when you're doing your initial corruption removal, you do at least want to remove down to here. Uh, that is, unless you are casting lightning bolt, just uh, you have lightning bolt knowledge. In that case, then the Tentacle Mouth would be the uh, corruption that's going to cause you problems, because that's a failure chance for casting spells. Um, if you got this one, this might not be in your corruption set, but yeah, if you're planning on getting him with Lightning Bolt, uh, then you need to remove that. Uh, and those are basically the main things we're going to be concerned with as far as getting corrupted by Chaos Plane. Um, it's going to be a pretty quick kill with Bounced Lightning, so I don't need to worry too much. Um, now, if you're playing a caster, another good option is Slow Monster. Um, he does gain some speed whenever you cast spells, but having his speed is going to be uh, more important than that. And then a final note here is Andor has Paralysis Melee, so don't forget that. Um, if you just get chain paralyzed, that's going to be very unfortunate. So you need one of two things. Well, one of three things, really. You either need a massive willpower score, so say like 99 willpower, then you have no problems. You just literally can't paralyze you. Uh, as long as you remember to remove all those uh, dooming artifacts you were wearing to enter the gate. Uh, the other one would just be uh, Parares. Um, this would probably be ideal, then you know you're safe. And then finally, uh, you could just not be in melee range. So 
let's say we have our lightning bolt set up um, and then instead of standing directly next to him we have a little bit of space in between and uh, this isn't as much of a problem as you might expect because he really likes spamming spells at you um, instead of moving into melee range where he's much more dangerous and then while he's busy spamming spells, we will uh, spam our lightning bolt and kill him much quicker. Um, so that's, uh, I think, a quick overview of uh, Ultra. Hopefully some useful advice there. And uh, yeah, that'll be it.